Hey, good morning, Chuck here with Apple Drains. You know, I have so many videos, the how-to tips, everything, every part of the rainwater drainage system. And I'm putting together the how-to tips collection. This is part one. We're gonna show you everything from, you know, getting a shovel, what shovels are the best shovels, how to tunnel the sidewalk, how to cut sod, how to hand dig, how to trench, how to install all the parts of the rainwater drainage system. But this is part one, and um, we're gonna post that today. Watch for the all the complete. When it's all done, we'll post the entire digital download for rainwater drainage systems. Hopefully that'll get done this week. Um, but realize that we are extremely busy. You know, I'm here in Florida, but remember that we have an office in Charlotte. Kevin runs that office. He's extremely busy also. So if you're calling Kevin or calling me um, and I don't return your emails right away, we have hundreds and hundreds of jobs. Um, we have hurricane season. We've got two of them approaching the coast here. Uh, should be here within the next four or five days. I urge you to get on the schedule. I do apologize for late replies. Um, we are so busy and I can't explain that. We're doing two and three jobs a day, both here and in Charlotte and trying to keep up with the demand. So this is part one of the how-to tips. It's going to cover everything from getting a shovel. A lot of people don't realize that there's differences in shovels. Um, show you the best shovel that we recommend. And if you watch other videos, you'll probably notice that other companies are using the same shovel. So it's a good video, good video tip. Uh, how to unroll the pipe. You'll be surprised how, how hard that really is. Uh, how to tunnel a sidewalk. So basically this is groundwork. Um, you know, hand digging, those type of things. Part one, take a look. Hey, good morning. Chuck here with Apple Drains. Today I want to take you through some shovel basics. We've got a good selection of shovels over here. We're at Lowe's, by the way. And uh, if you're going to do any type of drainage project, do not buy a cheap shovel. The shovel was seven dollars, and you can see it's got it's got rolled steel around the sides, going to the back. And this isn't the greatest thing. That and also, we'll call this the shank. You can see that it only comes up into about right here. The shovel would break in a matter of minutes. This is another example of a good shovel. This is a cobalt, really great shovel. It's got a good step, drive your foot right up against it. Nice wide area. You can see the shank comes all the way up to the top. This is a wooden shovel, but it will still work pretty good. Better is a fiberglass shovel. You'll be able to get good leverage when you're digging. This will flex a little bit, shouldn't break as quick. You can see the shank comes all the way up to the end of the shovel, works really good. Spend a little bit more Spend a little bit more and your job will be a lot easier. Plus you'll be able to use a shovel for something else. Nice sharp tip down here when you just, there might be roots down there. You can jab it down into the ground, smash it. You'll be able to cut those tree roots, no problem at all. Same thing on the rake. I mean, let's go down to the rakes. So it's the same kind of deal on the, on the rake because you need a rake to help grade out your soil, bring it back up into a pile. Here we've got a $10 rake, and you can't see it, but it has two bolts right here, shank, and it's already loose, I can feel it. When you start to really pull with this rake, it's just gonna pull it apart, it's just gonna pop off. This is a cobalt rake, and nice wide area out here, much stronger, steel that goes around good long shank nice bolt holds it all together this is a wooden a wooden one but it works really really good you'll be able to grab a hold of a lot of dirt 
can also use it as a plow. Put your body weight against it. Put your body weight against it and push. You can push your dirt over. Again, a rake's gonna last you a long, long time. My guys go through tools quite quickly. My guys go through tools quite quickly, but that's because we don't really worry about buying, I shouldn't say we, they don't worry about buying the material or the shovels or the tools. That's my responsibility. Hey, there's one more thing here at Lowe's I wanted to show you. Let's go take a look. So we get a lot of questions about liquid rubber, what we use to seal the foundation wall. And this is blackjack roof and foundation coating. It's, it's a fiber liquid asphalt coating, fiber liquid asphalt coating. Most of the questions are, you know, what do we use? Well, this is what you buy. <laughs> This is a five gallon container and it costs 47 bucks. So it works really good. You'll really enjoy using the product. It does say that you gotta have a good warm temperature, but if you're below 50 degrees, you go ahead and warm it up in your garage or your truck or your van. It'll work great. It'll dry within one day, 24 hours. Seal it tight. So again, the questions have always been, you know, which which foundation coating do you use? And this one's the one that we would recommend. Hey, you know, we're right here by the Home Depot as well. Let's go in there and take a look at their shovels and just kind of compare the prices. Let's take a look. Okay, so we came over to Home Depot to look at the shovels. And, you know, every now and then you find a really good deal. Sometimes, you know, Lowe's has it, sometimes Home Depot. What we're looking for is the same type of shovel. This is a Razorback. This comes with a lifetime warranty, which means if you break it, you can come back and just, we'll just give you a new one. Um, real good shank, same thing as the other, other spot. Good step, drive it down in. And it's $2 cheaper than at Lowe's. And it's 20% off today. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab a few of these shovels. So again, if you're gonna shop, shop. <laughs> This is a hundred foot roll of corrugated pipe. And this is the best way that we found to unroll this pipe. Take a hacksaw or a knife. There's three strings that hold this pipe together. Go ahead and cut those off. One person holds the roll just like it's on a spool. And the other person simply walks and pulls the pipe out. The secret is that the person holding the roll must keep his hands together and simply spin that roll, the other person just walks it down the line. And once we get it all the way pulled out, we'll go ahead and stretch this pipe. So one person is gonna pull on the end of it, and the other person pulls on that end, stretch that pipe out, make it nice and straight. Again, this is the best way that we've found to unroll the 100 foot roll of corrugated pipe. Hey, this is Chuck with Apple Drains reminding you that if you believe you can do something, I guarantee you can do it. Have a great day. Hey, good morning. Chuck here with Apple Drains. Today we are going to be extending a sump pump line. It comes out of the crawl space right over here. And if you look underneath the porch here, let your eyes adjust. You'll see where it comes out of the wall. And it's ending right here. So we're going to go ahead and tunnel underneath of this cross tie. And then we're going to dig a small trench, cut the side, and bring it all the way out here to the rocks, and let it discharge out into the lake. So over here where the discharge is coming out from the sump pump, what we've got to do is we've got to create you know, more of a gradual transition so we can go underneath of that retaining wall. And not real hard to do you just got to dig it but a great little project for the do-it-yourselfer that's just about got it it didn't take too long to do we should be able to have our pipe make a gradual slope 
and go underneath of this retaining wall. And the way that we'll do that is we're going to use a flexible coupling so that we can get a little bit of bend on the pipe. Basically it's just going to slide on and then another piece of pipe and you can see we can get it to flex a little bit, tighten it up and we'll go right underneath to that uh, retaining wall. <laughs> I've cut the pipe to length to slide underneath. On the other side we'll make a connection again but right here we just need to put our no hub on and then we can kind of force it down, force it right down in there. We'll come back and we'll tighten up these clamps and we'll be all set. So now we're ready to tighten up our no hub because we've got lots of flex in this line now. Remember a no hub uh, coupling is hard rubber and it's got stainless steel clamps. Some people actually call them expansion clamps because they allow for movement, but we're gonna tighten that up it's as tight as that drill will make it. Nice and secure. Now we're going to go ahead and cover this and we need to keep weight on this so that it doesn't pop up. So now I can just finish covering it up. If you're going to do this yourself, try to plan it out so that you've got all of your material and your tools, the things that you need you know, to finish your job quickly. And again, by yourself, I'd say it'd take you an hour and a half altogether, and you're done. So if you're gonna cut sod, it's nice to lay out your pipe. And what we're doing is we're just gonna chop right down through the sod along each side. Make sure you have, you're wide enough to you know, put your shovel down inside the, the trench that you cut. Try to get down and cut that root of your sod. If you've got good strong sod, this comes out pretty nice. Come back on the other side, pop it off. Then come back and take off one foot sections. You can see how easy it pops off. Just set it off to the side. Keep it straight so that you're able to put it back. So once your sod's off, go ahead and start your trench. Remember this is summertime here in North Carolina and this dirt is just like rocks. So because we're hand digging and there's sprinkler systems and all kinds of other stuffs out here, we are doing this by hand and we're just going to use the pick. Line doesn't have to be deep, but it does need to be underground. So we'll end up picking all the way down through here. And out here at the rocks, you can see I've already pulled the rocks up where we're going to discharge to. There is a little retaining log here, telephone pole type. We're going to tunnel underneath of this and basically the line's just going to discharge right in here to the riprap. That's what the stone's called, riprap. And you can see all the huge voids here. That water should just dissipate through the voids and of course, you know, end up out in the water. <laughs> so we've been here about an hour all together. Um, we've pretty much got this installed. The, our inch and a half pipe comes out and it discharges into the riprap. There shouldn't be any problem there at all. That water should find a way through all that stone without any problem. We had to tunnel underneath of that retaining log. We've got our inch and a half pipe installed all the way up where it comes out from underneath the crawl space. Basically now we're just gonna cover and clean up. So when you're backfilling any type of pipe, you should definitely keep weight on it. Notice how he's got his foot down on the pipe just pull that dirt right over on your boot won't hurt it the more weight you can keep on it the better because that pipe tries to pop up out of there and if that dirt gets underneath of it then you've got a problem 
So once you've got your area raked up, you can go ahead and start setting your sod back. Remember, t put it back on exactly the way it came off. And you also need to butt them together really tight. Just keep it nice and tight. Set it straight into your trench. We'll water this. It'll sink right back down to normal. So you can see how the sod looks. Nice and clean all the way back. A little bit of rake job here on the side. You can just rake that either up onto the trench or down to another end so that it disappears and you're all done. Hey, this is Chuck with Apple Drains, reminding you that if you believe you can do something, I guarantee you can do it. Have a great day. Hey, good morning. Chuck here with Apple Drains. Today we're going to take a look at how to tunnel a sidewalk. And basically, if you look at how I'm shoveling, I'm going to hit right underneath of the walk and pull the dirt down. And we do that several times just to loosen up the dirt. And then we come back with the shovel and we clean out our trench a little bit. Keep doing this and you will make real quick progress underneath. Notice how I've got all that dirt down in the trench now and I can easily pick it up and take it out. Even though it only takes out just a little bit of dirt at a time, that's fine because that dirt has to get out of there. So one way or the other, doesn't matter. Continue hitting underneath of the sidewalk, prying up when you're at the bottom and pushing down when you're at the top. And you can see just a few seconds here, and I've slowed this down so you can see it, but with just in a few seconds, pretty much six, eight, 10 inches into the walk. On the other side, we've got Telly over there and he's pretty good at tunneling also. Right now he's just prepping his trench to get down to the right depth. And there is a lot of prep involved before you can do this. Notice that we've got a trench that extends out so we can put our shovels down in them and they can lay flat. Also make sure your trench is wide enough that there's no resistance when you push that shovel through because you want all your energy to go right up and hit that dirt under the walk. So I switched over to the tunneling shovel. Let's go see what he's got going on over there got a nice deep trench I like that <laughs> oh yeah you're doing good but you are going to your left see what I'm saying you're really turning left yep just keep on going you're looking good man I'll get that other shovel and uh, see what we can do with that Notice how Telly has trenched from the top of the sidewalk, knocking all that dirt down. And now he's got his big shovel out to go ahead and just clean out the trench. It's making real good progress. I'm about to use the small tunneling shovel on the other side. Yep. So basically you go as far as you can with a regular shovel. And you can see how far this goes under. This goes under pretty far. We're going pretty much to the end of the metal right here. So we're about almost halfway. Then, kind of look in that hole, it's kind of dark in there. Then we take our tunneling shovels and these go pretty quick, but they take less soil out. So let's get started on that. And the way I like to dig is like this. Just straddle the trench. I'm gonna be pushing the shovel underneath my legs to take it out. Let's take a look. It's the same principle. In other words, even though you only get a little bit of dirt out at a time, that's fine. Just keep poking 
twisting that shovel. This is a five inch wide shovel, so our pipe's four inch. The outside diameter is actually four and a half inch. And once we push through there, it'll be a perfect hole for that pipe to go through. Then we'll just clean out the excess of our trench and we're ready to lay pipe. <laughs> yeah, you hear that? That's coming through, you may feel it. <laughs> yep. So that took about 10 minutes. Didn't take long. Trench telly. Way better than my side, man. Hell yeah. Looks real good. So now we're going to push our pipe through. We're using a four inch corrugated and we're just pushing it right underneath the walk. We'll pull that little bit of mud right out of the end of the pipe there and then we'll hook it up to our T, which is coming from a catch basin and from downspouts from the house. There's our T. This pipe just snaps together into the T. It's very easy. Do this with one hand. There's a good snap and we're connected. So here's our catch basin in the yard. It's actually picking up a lot of water that will come from the street. And you can see it just discharges on the other side of the walk about 20 feet down. And it's just downhill there, so we can just let it come out on top of the ground. And it, it definitely runs we're downhill. Okay, we're testing the line. Just putting some water in this catch basin that we've already installed. And it's running in here great. Of course, this line comes down. You can see the straw. It's underneath of there. It picks up a couple of downspouts. This one, that one in the corner, comes out. It also picks up another downspout in that corner over there. Comes in, wise into it here. Comes on down the hill. We had it just going out to the street, but they didn't want it there, so we've moved it. And you can see our catch basin, nice and dry. I mean, there's some mud in the bottom, but. There's no water coming out of the, the main line. So there's a, there's a T right here, and it goes right out underneath the walk. And you can see our water coming out real nice down here at the other end. Nice flow. Hey, this is Chuck with Apple Drains, reminding you that if you believe you can do something, I guarantee you can do it. Have a great day.